So today we're going to talk about some fun stuff. Death and taxes. Okay, death might be an exaggeration, but we are going to talk a little bit about health care because I've been asked a number of times about an update. There isn't much to update beyond what I said the last time a few months back, but we'll hit it. I do want to mention taxes. There's a misconception that comes up quite a bit about Ecuador being the lowest taxed country in South America. And the more I researched this, the more I decided to scale back what I was originally going to do in this video. So I'm really just going to mention Peru and Colombia with Ecuador. Pretty good examples, uh, popular expat locations. And to go into all the countries, we could do this for hours. And to be perfectly honest with you, taxes bore me to pieces. Uh, and the more I researched, the more complicated it got. And so I'm going to give a little disclaimer right here at the beginning. And when it comes to the taxes, every country I looked at, it's a very complicated system of charts and uh, exceptions. It, it's it's really difficult to come up with very specific generalized numbers but <clears throat> I made a great attempt to do that for you it, it could be picked apart but in general it's going to be true and you're welcome to go do your own research now why is it that people say Ecuador is the lowest tax well they look at the EVA which is actually the value added tax I is impuesto, it's tax. And they compare it from country to country. So let's do that with Peru and Colombia. <clears throat> so Ecuador is 12%, the lowest on the continent, and I don't dispute that. Colombia is 19%. Colombia varies quite a bit, where Ecuador is fairly steady. It did go up 2% after the earthquake, but it came back down, and it's been fairly steady. Uh, in Colombia, it goes, well, 19% is the highest it's been in, in many years, but it can drop down to 14%. It, it does vary. It'll go up and down, depending on the, the economic climate at the time. Um, Peru? Peru is 18%. It's also a country that varies and goes up and down. So Ecuador 12%, Colombia 19%, Peru 18%. So therefore, Ecuador is the lowest tax country, right? Well, let's look at other things that come into play as you're buying. Let's look at the custom tax. Now, this is a very complicated one. Um, I came up with the very best I could to give a reasonable representation. Now, any of us living in Ecuador know that some products have a tax as high as 140%. Now, we know that, but I'm not going to include that. Those are particular exceptions on things like laptops and electronic devices, and <clears throat> but they don't constitute the majority of what you buy to live and and so I tried to narrow that down and so there's a band in Ecuador that's the import tax the tax that is applied on items coming into the country that ultimately if you're here you're going to buy runs between 15 and 45 percent that's where the vast majority of the taxes fall on the products coming in 15 to 45 percent in Colombia, that's 0 to 20 percent. 0 to 20 percent in Colombia. And in Peru, it's 4 percent to 12 percent. Now, of those, what you would most likely buy, the lowest is actually Colombia with Peru right behind it. 
and then Ecuador is considerably more. You have to take that into account when you talk about taxes in a country because ultimately every time you buy something, you're paying for that. Another misconception is, well, in Ecuador, they don't tax the poor. And uh, what do you mean? Uh, everybody pays the IVA. Yeah, but the items that the poor use, like vegetables and milk, and that's not taxed. Well, I got news for you. Basics in every country are not taxed. I don't know of a country that taxes them. The United States doesn't tax them. So if you go in and you buy tomatoes, there's no tax on it. There's no sales tax on it. So there's nothing unusual about that. It's not special to Ecuador. It's not special to any country. It's what countries do, and it makes good sense. I'm glad it's like that. So basic items you need to exist are pretty much not taxed anywhere. Ecuador is no different, so you can't give it a special boost for doing that when that's what everybody does. And the last one I'm going to mention, and there are other taxes, but they're all pretty much the same. Ecuador may be low in its EVA, its value added tax, but all the other taxes are very high. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about capital gains taxes because that has a direct effect on the economy. So we're going to say, so we look at Colombia and the capital gains tax in Colombia is 10%. In Peru, the capital gains tax is 30%. In Ecuador, the capital gains tax is 75%. So, as a rule, what you're going to find in most countries in South America that the total tax works out for the majority of people to be somewhere in the 20-25% range. In Colombia and in, in Ecuador, it's almost 40%. So yes, the value added tax or the EVA, as they call it here, is only 12%, and that's the lowest on the continent. But it is not the lowest taxed country on the continent. It is actually the highest taxed country. Now, this changes constantly, and there was just a law passed to drop the capital gains. I don't know what the percentage that is. It's not in effect yet. Uh, it will be lower. And there was a trade agreement that dropped some import taxes, but as of the first of this year, they turned around and put them back on in violation of those trade agreements. So all of this is in flux. So I'm taking the best information I can with what applies to most people. When you look at these charts, what applies for this person doesn't apply to this other person here. So if you do a little research on this, you'll see how difficult it is, but this is why when I'm talking about cost of living being higher here than other countries I've been to, such as Peru and Colombia, this is why it is the case. While it seems like it's lower because some things are lower, overall, it's actually not. It's actually expensive compared to countries around us. Now, does that mean it's more expensive than San Francisco? Uh, no, no. It's not more expensive than Tokyo or London, but it certainly is more expensive than Cedar Falls or Naples, New York. So this idea is a relative term, but I really wanted to put to rest this this rumor that goes around about Ecuador being the lowest tax. It's, it's not the lowest tax. Now, let's talk a little bit about the death part or the health care. Last year, at the beginning of the year, when they passed the new law that was going to require everyone to have health care, I was really annoyed because I, I resent governments that force you to do anything like that including Obamacare. I, I just don't think people should be forced to do these sorts of things. 
Um, although there's some precedence to it. I mean, there's seat belts, and, and so we could get into an endless argument about that. Uh, my political leanings tend to be more libertarian than anything else, and so it just rubs me the wrong way. But that may have to do with my upbringing. Um, grew up in the country with little to no restrictions, and the local law enforcement were more like neighborhood friends, and it was kind of a different world than a lot of people are brought up in. So I had a resentment for that, and I did a video that expressed that resentment. But here, when laws are passed, it doesn't mean that's what's actually going to happen. That may sound weird to you, but that's just the way it is. They'll pass the law, and in this case, they pass the law that, one, parts of it are unconstitutional, and I mentioned that in the video. Two, they have no way to enforce it, and three, they have no way to record keep or document. So what does it boil down to? If you want to buy the government insurance, the IESS, you can purchase it at the price that everybody else purchases it, the $67, $70, uh, varies by a few dollars, and I don't know how that works, if you buy it online. If you buy it in most of the country of Ecuador, it's not a problem. You'll just, you can go into the office and buy it, and you're all set. In Cuenca, if you go into the office, they're going to hit you $200, $300, $400 with no basis to do so, contrary to what people want to tr try to argue that don't know what they're talking about. Uh, but if you do it online for Cuenca, then you're going to pay the $60 or $70. Now, why that higher amount? Well, for retired people, they were going to charge them a percentage based on the retirement funds that they, re they um, declared getting their visa. And for many people, that drove that price up and up and up and up and up. However, it's unconstitutional. And I won't go into that here, but it violates the Constitution. Therefore, it hasn't happened. And it won't happen because it was a poorly written law. Nobody considered this. And that's not that unusual. And the last thing is, if you have insurance and you go into one of the government offices to report that you, look, see, I have documentation, I have this insurance, there is no way for them to actually record that. Now, they could put it in a notebook or something, but it was just a few years ago they bought this massive, very expensive software program to handle all their immigration requirements just prior to this law. So there is no place in that software to actually enter in anything about health care. Well, if you're sitting behind a desk in a Zogies and somebody brings you in that certificate but you have no place to enter it, what do you do? Well, for a while they're saying, okay, and they're putting stamps on it, and, but it wasn't being recorded anywhere. Now, I made mention of this uh, on Gringo Post, and I got blasted by people, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And, and the reason I mentioned it is there were people selling trips to Azogis to help you get this recorded. People would jump on anything to make a dollar here, and I, I don't hate them for that. But it really is a wasted trip because once you get there, they go through the motions, but nothing was happening. And because it was so bogus, decree came down from Quito that no offices will no longer accept any documentation. Because they couldn't to begin with. It was a charade. It was a farce. They're putting stamps on paper and giving you a copy back, but it didn't go anywhere. You know, any copy they got went into a cardboard box somewhere and thrown in the trash. I know it may sound crazy, but that's just how things go. So there's no way to document it anyway. So if you come across the border and you want to look into the computer system, to if you're immigration and you want to look into the system to verify that this person with this visa has this health care, there's no place to look. It's not really doable. 
Now, they can require that um, you carry a document with you, I, I suppose, but none of that's happening because it's such a mess. Um, now, Adri, Adriana, Adriana Gavalanes, who is a doctorate attorney here, um, did weeks and weeks and weeks of trips to Quito and research. Now, I'd mentioned once before that she is very well connected. And of course, I get scoffs and, well, you can say anything. Well, she was appointed at the beginning of this year as the director of the entire Oswe province, actually Zona 6, which is larger than the Oswe province, uh, for the government. It's a, it's a political appointment because of her connections and because of her articles written in the equivalent of the law review in Ecuador. She is well known, she is well respected, she is extremely well educated, she knows what she's talking about when it comes to visa matters, that's, that's one of her couple areas of expertise. She had to sort through it as well because none of it made sense and so the information that I would portray to you, I would received from her. We had a number of conversations about this. But the bottom line and what she kept telling me since the middle of last year is don't worry about it. Why? It's complicated. Don't worry about it. I, I, I gotta worry about it because what happens if I lose my cedula and I need a new one? What? Don't worry about it. She just kept repeating don't worry about it. And I eventually came to learn don't worry about it. Yeah, I would suggest anybody have some sort of health care, whether it's ten to twenty thousand dollars in a trust fund that you can draw on specifically for medical expenses, or it's a policy somewhere, or it's a government program. You should have some sort of health care. I was arguing against it because I've got a particular type of of uh, plan that covers everything 100%, it's free of charge. I paid the cost in my younger years and um, there's, I have no need for anything beyond that. But that's not the case for most people and you should have some kind of health care. And yes, you can go to the doctor for $20, but that's not really health care and while well, you can afford that, Maybe you can't afford a $1,500 or $15,000 operation procedure or whatever it may be. So it's only common sense that you'd have something, particularly in a country where you don't have extensive friends and family to help care for you and support you that you made from the country that you came from. So um, <clears throat> I was never ever suggesting to people not to have health care. I think everybody should. I was just resenting what was going on. Why would I be forced to pay a couple hundred dollars for something I already have in a better way and I don't have to pay for it? So that was a particular situation. So that's where we're at. That's our death in taxes. So if you don't have health care, go get health care. It doesn't have to cost you a fortune. Yes, IESS is essentially bankrupt. Uh, last numbers that came out was it's over four billion dollars in debt with uh, no way right now to remove that it's constantly increasing and at some point it will go bust a couple years I don't know but right now it's good and it's valid and it's 60 or 70 dollars a month what do you care right just go ahead and get it and if it ever goes bust, then go to something else. Uh, that would be my recommendation. I do say beware of there's a lot of charlatan or shyster or uh, there's a lot of private insurance plans here and you have to be really, really careful. The ones that are the, the most seen on the social media and the ones that seem to be most represented by English speakers are the ones that are probably the biggest scams. There's one in particular and because of the laws here I won't mention the the name, I don't want to ring any bells, but they had rates 
that were here and then when this law went through it tripled and so where people were paying under fifty dollars it went to over a hundred dollars just to take advantage of the situation and they've been having all kinds of financial problems and a lot of people aren't getting reimbursed and uh, in many cases you're having to pay for it and then wait months and months and months for reimbursement that may or may not ever come so you want to be real careful of these private insurance plans if i needed insurance and i was here in ecuador i would purchase the iess government system but I also would recognize the downside. It's a government system, which means you can wait forever for an appointment. The type of service you're gonna get will depend on where you live and the mood of the person that you're interacting with. It can be walk in and get an appointment in a week. It could be walk in, get an appointment six months from now and get postponed three times along the way. So it, there's, it's not a consistent service. On the face of it, the coverage is amazing. They cover everything, or almost everything. Um, <clears throat> so I would roll the dice with that and be prepared to have a little cash to fill in the blanks if necessary. So that's all I have to say on that. I hope this helps. It was, it bored me to tears to research it. It bored me to tears to do the video, but there's an awful lot of uh, people requesting this, so I hope it does you some good, and I'll see you later. You know you could.